Hi, this is a intro to Janvis demo video one. We're going to learn how to create and adjust some basic shapes today and uh, how to use some of the tools in the program to get you started. So real quick. OK, you go to the Janvis site, which I have it here. You can open it from the PowerPoint um, and then just click in the white space to get rid of the little pop up window that's there. Hover over the shape tool icon and choose the tool you want. So let's go do that real quick. Then, um, then we're going to learn how to save. So click in this white space. You get rid of the pop-up window. And then let's just draw some basic shapes to get started. So you can choose any one of these. See if I hover my mouse over here, then I get these options that drop down. So if I pick this, I can just, I'm just holding, I'm clicking the mouse and holding it down and dragging out. And then it'll make a shape for me. Now if I hold shift, it'll make that a perfect square. Same with the circles and the ovals. So oval, another oval, and circle if I hold shift. Okay, so we got that. Okay, so about saving, um, you guys are gonna need to save in two ways. This is kind of important. So you need to save it as the original HTML file to your Google Drive. Um, that's the only way you can save the HTML file that I know of that I figured out. And then um, because that will save all your layers. So when you're working in layers later, if you want to like save your work and then come back and work on it later, you would have to open this HTML file because Janvis won't open any other file type. I've tried JPEGs and PNGs. It won't open them. So, um, but to upload to the Dropbox, I need you to save it as a JPEG. So make sure you know how to save it as both ways. I'll show you how to do that. So basically, you go to the disk icon, you select Save As. You'll have to authorize your Google Drive account. So you just put in your password, and then you can save your work to your Google Drive. Um, and save often because I have had this program crash out on me before, like when I was in the middle of something. So make sure you save so that doesn't happen. And then. Um, to save as a JPEG or picture file, that's easy too. You go to the same disk icon and then um, you choose the option preview JPEG and then you right click and you can either copy the image and then open it in some kind of photo editor and save as a JPEG or you can just hit save as. Now it doesn't show you that it's attaching the .jpg to the end of the file when you hit save as, but I saved as, and then I went and found it on my computer and I checked the properties and it does save it as a JPEG. So either way should be fine. So all you do is if I open, and by the way, this angry bunny I created, he was just an example avatar um, for a future project that we're going to do. And this was my little avatar. Um, so here I have the JPEG file. That one won't open, but this HTML one will. We'll go here and then you just go to, let's see, if you do save as, then see my Google Drive comes up and I'm already logged in, so it's authorized. So then I can just go here and save it in whatever folder I want and then just hit save. Or um, if I want to save it as a JPEG, I just go to preview JPEG image and then I can right click and I can either copy it and then open it in a photo editor to save as a JPEG or I can hit save as and save it to somewhere on my computer and then it just hit save and then it would save it right in that spot so make sure you know how to save both ways okay so we added some shapes and we learned about holding shift you can make perfect circles and squares it's not too hard. Now the zoom tool. We're going to click on this magnifying glass and this will be important because sometimes when you're adjusting vector points or whatever, especially if you have a sketch underneath, you want to um, zoom in to make sure you got it right. So, And then sometimes you want to see the whole view. So if you click on this and see it just rolling my mouse over, I get a plus minus. If I click my mouse down, left click on that, then I'm rolling my mouse in and out and I can pan around there. Now, but what if I, I kind of want to move over here or something? You know what I mean? Like, I can't move with this, so then I can grab this hand tool, and I can kind of pan around with the hand tool. That's what the hand is for. And then if I want to zoom back out, 
I can just roll that back out and then grab the hand tool and move that around. So those are those two tools. So try that. Um, let's see, next. Now pointer tools. Okay, so we tried the hand tool. Now we're going to try the white pointing tool and we can move and adjust our shapes. So let's try that. So white pointy tool. I can click a shape. I can move it by holding the mouse down and dragging it around. Um, and then I can pull out these corners. I can adjust here. Um, and then if I want to hold that shape and make it smaller, I can hold shift down in the corner and drag it in and it'll keep the proportion. So that's that feature. Um, let's see what else is next. So that's the white pointer tool. It's different than the black pointer tool. Now the black pointer tool will adjust these points. It'll like move them. It won't just move the shape in and out. It'll actually move the points. So we'll try that. Black pointer tool. And now I can move these points. So that kind of gives you some options. Um, and even on the circle. Now you see these little handlebars come out. I can adjust these curves if I want. I'll show you more about that. Um, so black pointer tool does that. Then, okay, pen tool. Now the pen tool is going to take some practice to get used to, but that's what this whole first assignment is, is just seeing what it can do and trying to get used to it. Um, if we click the pen tool icon and select the last option, we'll, we'll worry about the other options in a different demo. For this one, I just want to learn to adjust some vector points. So we're going to pick the one that looks like a little teeter-totter. So it would be we, here's all our options. We'll talk about these three later. But if we pick this one, then, um, well, first I need to highlight something. Let's work with this one. And then I have this tool highlighted. Then if I pick on here, I can see this. I, I click on it and drag, and then I get these little handlebars that come out, right? Then I can take the black pointer and click on this once. And then I get these handlebars that come out. So now I can adjust this more. You know, like I can drag it out far. You know, I can push it in. I can move it up and down. So, and then I can move this too, like that. And if I, let's see. Um, so that's a little bit about what the the vector tools can do. Okay, so now I want to show you how to rotate shapes. There's a little handy icon for that, so let's look at that. If you go to this little circular arrow and you hover over that, you see these three options. Um, these two are for flipping either over a vertical or horizontal axis, and like if I do a heart demo later, which I might, um, I'll show you how to use those to your advantage. Uh, it, if you want a shape that's like perfectly symmetrical, they're pretty handy. So, but anyway, we're going to work with this one, the little circular arrow. And then you can see, like I highlighted that shape to spin it. Um, highlight the shape you want, and then you choose the tool, and then you just hover next to it. You don't even have to click right on it. I mean, you can, but even if you're just close to it, you click and drag, and then you can spin the shape any way you want. You can also go over here to rotation and put in something and then it'll, it will uh, adjust the shape for you. Now I'm not sure why it does this sometimes. That's like weird. But I think to get out of that, I just clicked on the arrow and I moved it again. And then click that and I think it fixes it. So yeah, if it gets weird like that, just re-click it with the pointer for some reason. So that's the rotation tool. Okay, so I just want to show you a sample project that I created, and I did this in like probably less than three minutes. Um, I just clicked and dragged some shapes out, and then I moved some vector points and made this kite shape. Um, I can show you how to make this little box, and making a heart is like really easy. The first time I did it, I did it the hard way, but there's a really easy way to do it. So I'll, I'll show you how to make a heart shape really quick. Um, we just pull this out and make like a square and then we just move our points. I move this in 
and I move these out. And remember, we can make these into curves. And we just learned how to do that. So move those up and then pick this, click on this, move it out. I think you see where I'm going with this. Move it out and just adjust it so it looks right. And we can rotate it. Oops. One. We can rotate that. And then we can take our time and like, you know, adjust these vector points more if we want to. Let me bring that in a little bit. So this is like a fine tuning kind of thing. And then like what I was talking about before, if I wanted it perfectly symmetrical, I'd probably just do half the heart and then copy it and flip it. Um, to get it like perfect perfect but um, just for demonstration purposes because that will take me a lot longer um, I think this is good so you learned how to make a heart today and then see like later we can fine-tune and get rid of these points too but that's another demo another time but anyway you learned how to do something cool and then also we can do get rid of that and I'll show you how I made that little cube I just made two squares so I had this. I said control copy, control paste. Now I have two. Then I can move it where I want it. You know, I can move the one in front of the other. And then I just use this line tool to connect the corners. You guys probably know how to draw it like that. So it's the same thing here. And then just connect the corners. You can make a box. Ta da! And then, so that's pretty much it for this first demo. Um, the best way to learn a new program like this is to try things out and have fun. If you come across any cool ideas, features, or new ways of doing the same thing, please share your discoveries in the discussion section of the course. Um, thanks, and I hope you have fun trying out Janvis.